Hello, hello, and welcome to the next latest and greatest live cohort on C949, Data Structures and Algorithms 1. I am Professor Lusby here at WGU, and um, I wanted to um, pick up where we last left off at the last cohort. Uh, we finally were able to make it through Unit 6, right? And we've definitely covered Units 1 to 5. Um, and so now we're getting into unit seven and we touched on it lightly, uh, last cohort. And, and we talked about 7 point. We went into 7.1 and we learned what a, um. What a heap is, and we saw that well with heaps. They look very similar to binary search trees, but they're very different. Right? So, for sure, they're a binary tree, meaning every node can have. Um, every parent can have two children, or every node can have a left and right child. Um, where they differ from a binary search tree is that for a heap, or in this case, a max heap or a maximum heap, the only requirement for a maximum heap is that the parent has to be larger than its two, its two children. All right, that's the only requirement. So as long as every value as long as every parent is larger than its children, then uh, it is a valid max heap. Um, and the beautiful thing about a max heap is that at the top, at the root node of the binary tree of the max heap always contains the largest value out of all the values that are in the tree. So we can find a maximum value if we store all of our data in a max heap and big O of one time. We can also do the opposite and do a min heap where the smallest number is always at the root node and we can find the minimum value of, of all values in the minimum heap and big O of one time because we just look at whatever the root is. Um, keep in mind though, we, we cannot search a, a min or max heap for a value like we can a binary search tree or a BST. So we got to pick the right tool for the job, right? And that's what this class is all about. We've got all these different data structures. We've got all these different algorithms. You know, they all store data. Uh, they all allow us to insert data and remove data. But some of these data structures allow you to search for a value. Others don't allow the searching, but they do allow you to find the minimum or maximum value quickly. So we got to pick the right tool for the job. And any time we have a program or algorithm that needs to um, uh, find a minimum or maximum value from a bunch of uh, numbers, from a bunch of values, we're going to use a min or a max heap. We're definitely not going to use a min or max heap if we need to search for a value. All right. So, um, yeah, so that was high level 7.1 that we went over last cohort. Now that we know what a heap is, what we're going to get into now is, you know, 7.1 kept showing us uh, these heaps in, in, in binary tree, tree form, right, in, in graphic form. But when we store these heaps or this data of, of these min or max heaps in memory, um, we can actually do so using an array, okay? Um, for sure, could you store these min or max heaps using another data structure other than an array? And the answer is yes, but if we use an array, um, it has a very small um, uh, space complexity versus some other data structures that take up more more memory. So if we can use an array to store our, our min or max heap, well, now we have a very small footprint in memory. Um, and, that, and that's a really good thing, especially for things like, um, you know, embedded systems, uh, smaller microprocessors that need to be able to find min and max values quickly. All right. Okay, so I think what participation activity uh, 7.2.1 here is trying to show us 
is that max heap stored using an array. What we can do is we can take, um, I guess, yeah, this is a max heap. For sure we know it's a max heap because the parent is always bigger than its two children, right? 72 is bigger than 58 or 63. Uh, 58 is bigger than 55 or 16. 63 is bigger than 44. So we know this is a max heap. If we want to store this in memory, what they say is basically just go from top to bottom down this binary tree and left to right. So if we want to store this in an array, in array form, we're going to take the root and put it in the very first index of the array. So whatever is at the zeroth index in the array, that is automatically the root. We're going to go to the next level, level one here, and we have 5863. So that's why we see in the array 5863. When we're going to go to the next level, and we see it's 55, 16, 44, 55, 16, 44. So it's very easy to convert a, um, a min or a max heap into an array because we're just literally <laughs> going down each level, reading left to right, left to right, and putting all these values sequentially um, into an array. All right. Um, Right. So, knowing that, let's see if we can get chat involved here. Let's take a look at participation activity 7.2.2.9er. Kidding about the niner. Let's say that we have this binary, uh, binary max heap, which is a binary tree. Which one of these? Well, it's kind of hard to see. Let's look at C. Let's look at C here. Which one of these do you think is the proper array representation of max heap C here? Is it A, B, C, or D? Hmm. Let's think about this. Well, for sure we know the root node should be the very first one listed in the array. And, well, it is for all of these. So that doesn't really help us, does it? All right. But for sure, yeah, all of these have the root node 57. So we're going to see that all of these have uh, the, the, the zeroth index is 57. So next is, all right, what should the second number be in the array? And we see, well, it should be 42 because we go down to the next level and read left to right. So for C, we should see 57, 42, 15 as the first three entries in the array 57 42 15 let's take a look down here no 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 57 42 15 and then we look here after that we should see 6 19 7 13 6 19 7 13 so for sure it looks like c would correspond uh to this the second entry here the second array i mean all right, well, let's try that. Uh, let's try D. Chat, what do you think about D here? Um, which one of these arrays is it? One, two, three, or four? Mm. One, two, three, or four. Well, if we look, for sure 57 should be the first entry. Well, it's the first entry for all of them. The next two should be 1942. 1942, 1942, all right. For sure it can't be these two, right? Because 1942, um, and this is 4219, wrong, wrong way. It has to be 1942. So it's either this one or it's this one. It's got the proper first three values, 57, 19, 42. So then out of these two, the next four values should be 6, 7, 13, 15. 6, 7, 13, 15. 6, whoa, 13, 6. No, 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 no. Wrong order. 6, 7, 13, 15. 6, 7, 13, 15. All right. So it looks like this fourth, <clears throat> this fourth array here would be heap D. Okay. All right. Um, you know, on the OA, could you see something like this? Yes. They, they may present. 
a min or max heap to you and say, well, what does you know, the array representation of this min or max heap look like? And you do need to know how to, you know, first the root node is the first entry in the array, and then you go next level, left to right, next level, left to right, um, and that will produce the array. Um, yeah, table 7.2.1 shows us that we can actually come up with a, with a formula that lets us know where the parents' children live in the array. All right, what the heck do I mean by that? Where the parents' children live in the array. So what I mean by that is, well, if we're looking at node zero, and node zero would be, let's say this guy, the root is node zero. Um, well, let's look at C, because we know this is what the array looks like for C. So here's zero, it's children, 57's children are 42 and 15, right? 57's children is 42 and 15. So node 57's children is at zero and one, uh, excuse me, one and two, zero, one, two, yeah. Zero, one, two in the array, zero, one, two. And that's what this is basically trying to tell us. Well, hey, the node at zero, which is the root, has two children at locations one and two in the array. Um, child, the node one, which is the left child of the root, has children three and four. For example, here's node zero, one, two. Node one has, child, has children three and four. Okay, one, two, three, whoop, zero, one, two, three, four. And so in the array here, 42's children are here, six to 19 at three and at location four. So we can, we can use a formula if we just, let's say we don't have this min or max heap printed out for us in this nice binary tree form. Maybe we just get a bunch of values in the array and they say, you know, well, this array is a min or max heap. What is array entry, array at index three, what is its children, right? What are the children of the, um, of node three in this array? Well, you can do the math here and see that three, three times two is six, six plus one is seven, three times two is six, six plus two is eight. So for node three, the children are at seven and eight. Um, and the parent, so if we're at node three, three minus one is two, two divided by two is one. And so three's parent is one. All right, so we can use math here in order to look at an array and it will tell us where the parent lives or where the, the children live. And that's gonna be super powerful later on for these algorithms that uh, use these min and max heaps, um, especially the array form of these min and max heaps. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna be seeing these formulas used inside of those algorithms. Do you need to know this for the OA? Um, I would be comfortable yeah, you kind of do. Um, I don't know if you need to, to know the formula. As long as you know that the array representation of this max heap here looks like this. You need to be able to go from, you know, the binary tree graphical form of the heap to array form and then vice versa. Well, what if you're given the array? What is the What does the binary tree look like? Um, I think as long as you can go back and forth there between these two representations and they tell you if it's a min or max heap, uh, you, should be, you should be good. Um, but that's basically all this formula means. It's, just, it's an easy way to figure out, well, if I'm at this node, here, here's the children of this node. Uh, and like I said, that's going to come in handy later on for 
uh, for the algorithms, for the min and max heap algorithms. Um, yeah, I mean, and I guess that's what these questions here are alluding to, participation activity 7.2.3. Yeah, maybe on the OA, you know, they, they give you this, this array that represents the max heap, and they say, well, what is the parent index uh, for, for the entry at index 12 in the array? And um, we would have to know to come up here and do what? 12 minus one is 11. Um, 11 divided by two is 5.5. The floor of 5.5 is five. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess knowing these formulas is probably a good idea. Uh, unless you wanna draw the tree out. I mean, I guess you could just draw the whole tree out and kind of figure it out that way as well. Okay, um, I don't know. This is getting kind of down into the weeds here. Um, I'm not too worried about these other questions, uh, at least being on the OA. If you'd like help with these questions, please don't be afraid uh, to make a, an appointment with the C949 instructor uh, and uh, we can go over it together with you. All right, percolate, <laughs> another funny name. Heaps, treeps. Creeps, sweeps. I was uh, hearing the, um, we're soon to talk about treeps. Every time I hear treep, I think of uh, Spaceballs the movie. I don't know if you've ever, it's a parody on Star Wars. And there's a scene where, um, it's a Mel, Mel Brooks movie, by the way. And there's a scene where uh, they're on the big, you know, battleship or whatever. And and one of the, the Spaceballs or the Stormtrooper says, I've lost the sweeps, the bleeps, and the creeps. <laughs> and they he has to explain what the sweeps, bleeps, and 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 creeps are, and then I and then I see treeps, and uh, I get flashbacks of that uh, of that scene. Anyways, all right, enough about that. Percolating. Let's talk about percolating, shall we? Um. So when we insert a value into a min or max heap, we may need to percolate it up or percolate it down. And in fact, I think we talked about that last cohort in 7.1. Let me verify that here real quick. Yeah, here, 7.1.2, right? When we insert at 85, notice we always insert values at the bottom of uh, the, the min or the max heap. It's just whatever the first slot is in that last level, that's where you're gonna insert uh, your new node inside the max heap. And when you do that, though, you have to look and say, okay, is the parent bigger than the child, right? Because that, if this is a valid max heap, all parents have to be bigger than the children. And we're going to see no, right? 85 is bigger than 80. So this is bad. But what we can do is swap the two and percolate it up, right? And maybe it's the case that the root up here is even smaller and maybe we have to do another swap and percolate the 85 all the way up to the root so that's what this percolating means is when you insert it into a heap min or max heap you have to keep moving it or percolating it either up or down in order to keep it a min or a max heap all right so typically on insertions you're percolating up because you always have to insert at the bottom of the tree. When we remove, when we remove an item like 88, let's say we want to remove the root of the tree, we always take whatever is uh, the last node of the heap and we replace it. So for instance, 80, right? 80 is the last uh, node of, of the heap and we put it wherever that node was that we deleted. So we took that 80, put it at the root, and we percolated it down, <laughs> okay? So the 80 went from being here, boom, to the top because we deleted 88, and then we had to percolate it down so that 85 would, you know, this is a max heap. So 85 has to be at the top. So typically when we're inserting, we have to percolate up, and when we're removing, we're having to percolate down. And finally, 7.2 shows us 
uh, what these percolate algorithms look like. And the reason they waited until now to show us is because we know how these heaps can be represented using an array and this algorithm uses, you know, uses this heap array in order to do percolation. <laughs> okay. Um, now, do you need to memorize this code? No. All right. Um, you know, some computer science geniuses uh, at some point in time came up with this for us. We do not need to reinvent the wheel. It is proper pseudocode. Each line of this proper pseudocode can map to any language out there. Um, so really cool stuff. Uh, here's the up, right? In case we insert at the bottom, we need to percolate up. We can run this, uh, this algorithm here. In case we do a delete and we need to percolate down, well then we use this algorithm here. And again, it, it is using that, that uh, array the heap array in order to do this percolation. All right. Um, all right, enough about that. Yeah, here they they go into the nitty gritty of, of how these algorithms work um, and really interesting stuff, but I don't believe on the OA you're gonna see anything this low level, um, you know, cause I, even I would have to have this code sitting in front of me to, to answer the, the, these questions here. And I, I don't think, and if, you, if you're watching this and you know otherwise, please, um, you know, contact me and, and let me know what you've seen concerning how detailed they get on this, on this percolation, on these percolation algorithms. Um, I'm pretty sure that as long as you can look at some min or max heaps like this, and insert an item at the bottom, and you know how many times you got to percolate until it reaches the proper position, you're good, to my knowledge. All right, so I'm going to skip over this part here. All right, so then the end of 7.2 here says, well, this is a good challenge activity. If they show you this looks to be a max heap, right? Because the biggest, uh, the root node is the largest value out of all of these, so therefore, it is a max heap. What is that going to look like in array form? And just like we talked about a second ago, we always start at the root, 95, go to the next level, 86, 82, go to the next level, 51, 32. So in theory, should look like. Dun, 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 dun. 51, 32, right? So I just literally went dun, 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 dun. Wrote it out, bada boom, bada bing. We are on fire. Maybe one more? Should be enough. Um, hmm, yeah, we're gonna move on. In the interest of time, we're gonna move on. And if you have any, uh, if you need help with any of this, please reach out to a C949 instructor so we can do a a one on one, and really go through this, um, maybe, you know, together. All right, seven point three. What is this? Yeah. So like I said, um, I'm not going to be covering what I consider bonus material. Um, any of these units that have Python in the front, for sure, they're taking that proper pseudocode that I just showed you and they're translating it into Python, but you could also translate this in the Java or C++ or C Sharp, right? All of these data structures apply to all languages. Um, to my knowledge on the OA, you're only gonna see two or three questions about Python directly. Um, and so, I don't know, I'm, I'm not gonna go over 7.3 7 because I consider this bonus material, it is a Python subunit, same with the labs. Uh, I'm not, at least this cohort series, going to go over the labs either, because you don't have to write code from scratch uh, on the OA. All right, so now let's talk about a heap sort, shall we? All right, so we learn what a min or max heap is, and we learn how to percolate up and down using um, an array, okay? Well, using a 
array representation of the min or max he. Well, now what we're going to see is that we're going to learn about something called Heapify. Heapify, all right? And Heapify basically means just take an array um, that contains random values, all right? An array that contains random values. Create a um, binary tree out of this array, right? 77 is the root, 55 is the left child, 92 is the right, 67 goes here, right? So create this binary tree using uh, the array's data. But if we look at this binary tree, for sure it's not a, it's not a min or a max heap, right? Because look right here, 77, 92. If this were a max heap, the 92 should be up here and the 77 should be down here, right? That's the requirements of a max heap. The, the parent is always greater than the child and for sure it's already violated here. So this is not a max heap. What heapify means is let's take this uh, non-max <laughs> heap, this binary tree, and let's turn it into a max heap. Um, and the way that it does this is, um, what, I think it shows it, yeah, let's take a look at this animation here. All right, so here is the original array. It creates the binary tree using the original array information. Recognizes this is not a valid max heap, so I need to heapify. All right, how do we heapify? So the good news is that at the bottom of this, whatever this binary tree is, doesn't matter. The leaves, we don't have to look at the leaves if we're heapifying, all right? Um, because it doesn't have any children. Each leaf doesn't have a child. So by default, it is the only, you know, it doesn't have any children. It's the greatest value of its children, of which there are none. So we can skip these guys. What it's going to do next, I believe, is it's going to look at, I think, either 55 or 92. So we skip the leaves, all right, and we take a look at the first, not the first, the biggest internal node, okay? And in this case, it's 92. And notice that the internal nodes here are 92, 55, and 77, right? The internal nodes are the ones that have children. Okay, so we're going to look at this first internal node here, and we're going to say, hey, is this larger than both of its children? And the answer is yes. 92 is bigger than 24. 92 is bigger than 42. But, you know, so 92 is fine. We don't have to do anything with 92. All right. The next thing Heapify says is, hey, let's come over here and look at 55 next. All right. So we're going to look at all the internal nodes. And when it looked at 55, it noticed that its child, 98 here, to the right was bigger, so it went ahead and swapped the two. And after it swapped the two, it looks at everybody and says, okay, is this right? Yeah, 98 is bigger than 67, 98 is bigger than 55, so we're good here. So at this point, it's going to come up here and look at 77. Remember, this is what's called heapifying, right? Anytime we just take random data, and we, we progress through all the internal nodes to where at the very end of this heapify, we should see the, the largest value automatically at the root, all right? So the, I think that's what step five is gonna show us here. We looked, at, we looked at this internal node, we looked at this internal node, and now we're gonna look at the root or the last internal node, which is 77. And notice that 98 was bigger than 77, all right? So it did a swap there. And all of a sudden, 98 is at the top, and it looks at its two children, and it says, yep, sure enough, 98 is the biggest, and we are done. So at this point, the, the, the max, the binary tree has been heapified, and we have automatically found the largest or max value is at the root of the new heapified max heap. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Heap of file max heap. All right, enough about that. You know, you gotta keep it entertaining <laughs> somehow. <laughs>
Uh, okay. So here, what they're trying to show us in table 7.4.1 is that, um, yeah, the largest internal node index. So no matter how big of a binary tree you have, when you do this heapify, you never have to look at whatever, whatever this bottom level, whatever these leaves are at the bottom level, you can completely ignore those. The only thing, the only nodes you need to look at when you heapify are the internal nodes above all the leaves or the last level. All right. And that's a good thing. Um, and that's what helps keep this heapify operation log in. Because notice that this last level, no matter how big the tree is, is always going to have a little over half of the nodes than everything above it, all right, because of its binary nature, right? It keeps doubling. So if we can eliminate that last level and only do internal nodes, well, then our heapify should only take log n time because anytime you uh, cut a data set in half and you keep cutting it in half, right, as we go up the binary tree, we keep cutting the number of nodes in half, uh, but then heapify should be log n time. All right, and we keep running into this, right? All these advanced data structures like AVL trees, like red black trees from last unit, all have log n time. So, th you know, these binary trees are very, very powerful. Um, they allow us to have log n time instead of n time, like a list or an array would give us. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, again, you know, if, if you can't envision what the binary tree looks like, you could use this formula here to figure out how many internal nodes there are. So if, we, for instance, we have an array with seven nodes and we need to percolate up or down, we only need to heap, um, if we need to heapify uh, that array, right, turn it into a heap, then we just plug in this seven guys, seven divided by two is 3.5. The floor of 3.5 is three, three minus one is two, but I think it's three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two, one, and zero. So if we have seven nodes, which is the case up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we don't look at these leaves, but we look at these three internal nodes. So we have to do at least three operations. Um, I'm not sure where this minus one guy is coming from. Oh, the largest internal node index, not how many nodes are there. The largest internal node index. So, yeah, three is the largest internal node, but it takes it uh, takes at least three percolate down operations or percolate up with an array that contains seven nodes. And again, if you can draw it, you know, or, or envision this in your head. Or, and don't be afraid to use paper and pencil in the OA, by the way. <laughs> Please. Um, yeah, because otherwise things are going to get, may get a little confusing. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know. These, these questions here are a little bit tricky. I guess we could go over these here real quick. Uh, an array and sorted. In ascending order is already a valid max heap ascending order. So that would be like, let's say one, two, three, four, five. Well, one, two, three, four, five would be a valid min heap, but for sure that's not a valid max heap. Uh, the very first entry in that array should be the biggest value, and that would be descending order, not ascending order. All right. Um, all right, question two, which array could be heapified with the fewest number of operations? All right, valid question. What do you think, chat A, B, or C? Um, these are arrays that represent a heap. We don't know min or max heap, but for sure they represent a heap. And um, what that means is this is the root. So I guess we're saying max heap. 
20 and 30 are bigger than the root, so for sure there's going to be at least one swap. And then 40 is it is it uh, blah, 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 blah. the child of 20? So for sure there's another swap. This is at least two swaps if you were to draw out this tree. Same goes well here. I think there's like one swap needed here. This is why I say it's a trick question because here they list the same node value across the board. That means that no swaps are necessary, but it also means it's kind of a worthless uh, min or max heap. But you know, fewest number of swaps needed is this one because we that no swaps are needed. It's all the same. It's all the same number. Um, I don't know. Hopefully you don't see questions like this on the OA. But again, please let me know if you're watching this and you know otherwise. That would be really great information. All right. Um, right. So we know about heapifying, and we know how heapification can take a random binary tree and create a min or max heap, we heapify it. And that min or max heap is gonna have either, let's say max heap, let's just focus on max heap. We always have the largest value on the top. Um, well, somebody figured out, well, you know what? We could use this to our advantage. And if we just always heapify, the largest value is gonna continue to bubble to the top or percolate up to the top. And if we wanna sort, an array of values, we can use this heapify in order, in order to help us sort this entire uh, list or array of data. Now, how in the heck do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's called heap sort, and it is demonstrated here in participation activity 7.4.4. Here is the original array of, of data that is completely random, all right? We run it through a heapify operation. It looks like a max heapify operation because I see 94 here at the very beginning, which is the very first value. So they heapify it into a max heap, right? Using that, that heapify concept that we just, you know, the percolating up. Um, and once we heapify it, notice it's still not sorted, right? Still not sorted, but we do know what the max value is out of all of these guys. What it's going to do is, and maybe they demonstrate this, hopefully. All right. So we take it, we heapify it. This is what step one is doing. All right. So after we heapify, now we have a valid max heap, but the array, you know, still isn't sorted. Right. Sorted meaning smallest value is here in the front, largest value is here at the bottom. But for sure, this is a valid max heap. So what it's going to do now is it's going to take, because we know 94 is the largest number out of all these, it's going to take the 94 and stick it at the end of the array, take the 68, put it at the beginning of the array, and then it's, it's going to pretend like this 94 guy doesn't even exist. All right, once we take the 94 and put it at the end, pretend like this 94 guy doesn't even exist, and then heapify only these, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six, heapify these six items again, so watch. All right, may not make sense yet, but wait until the end here. All right, so we took 94, right, which we know is the largest, we put it at the end of the array, but then we're gonna somehow hide it from the, from the heap to where, uh, you're gonna see 94 just go poof, Watch this. Poof. Like it like it was never there. And once it goes, that's why it's grayed out. So this heap uh, or this binary tree no longer even sees the 94, but it's still in the array. All right. And notice that when we swapped, what was it? Which number was it again at the end here? Uh, whatever was at the beginning, when we swapped it, we reheapified again. Right, just with these one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six items, and that automatically bubbled 88 to the top. All right, so after we swap with the last one, 
put 94 back here. We reheapify. Now 88 is here. Well, now we know 88 is the next biggest value. So we're going to take 88 and swap it with this guy. Go boom, boom. Uh, ignore 88, make it gray, and then reheapify the rest of these guys. So watch, see? Swap the 49 and 88, and then reheapify what remains. And boom, we got the third biggest value. So now we're going to swap these two. Make it gray, reheapify. Re okay. So note how powerful this is, right? All we have to do is keep heapifying, grabbing whatever's at the root, throwing it to the back of the array, ignoring it, and rinse, wash, and repeat. <laughs> All right. Um, pretty ingenious concept. Whoever the heck came up with, you know, somebody looked at a heap and said, hey, I think we can use this to, uh, to sort and end log end time which is an amazing uh, big O runtime for a sort, by the way, right? Because there's other sorts out there that are big O of N squared. So um, I think they make note of that here somewhere, but for sure heap sort is N log N um, sort time. And um, that's a really, really good uh, performance. All right. Um, yeah, for this one, let's switch over here to the projector, shall we? All right, um, 7.4.5. They may show you something like this on the test. And um, they say, okay, well, number one, Make sure that, you know, you have to heapify this guy. Suppose the original array to be heapified is this. So at this point, at least for me, I'm going to bust out the paper and pencil, and um, I'm going to draw, what does this look like? What is this binary tree that represents this? Well, it looks like, well, it's a random array right now. What does that look like? And so I put 11 at the root because it's first, 12, uh, excuse me, 21 and 12 as its two children, 13, 19, 15, as, it's, uh, as the next row of nodes. And when we look at this, I assume they want us to do a max heap here. They don't really tell us. Uh, no, it's a publisher. Um, when we look at this and, and we got to heapify it so that it becomes a valid max heap, because notice that right now it's not. We've got a 12 here and a 15 here. Well, 15 is bigger than 12, so we need to, you know, we need to percolate the 15 up or percolate the 12 down, but either way, we gotta swap these two guys. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to show here is that our first step here is to, to swap the 12 and the 15, um, at least percolate, and I don't know why they say percolate down. Normally when we're, well, I guess we're not inserting, are we? So it's kind of relative. If you're talking about 12, you're percolating the 12 down. If you're talking about 15, you're percolating the 15 up. Um, and then the next step, all right, so once we percolate the 12 down, we get a tree that looks like this, right? 15's here, 12's here, and this is fine. Parent greater than the child. This is fine, parent greater than child, parent greater than child. And so we move to um, the root node and we see well the root is 11 but its child down here is 21 for sure 11 is not greater than 21 <clears throat> so we have to percolate the 11 now percolate all right um and when we do that we come down here to a tree that looks like this and what we're going to see is that okay 21 is bigger than 11 21 is bigger than 15. That looks good. 15 is bigger than 12. Looks good. Uh-oh. 11 is not bigger than 19, and 11 is not bigger than 13. So notice that sometimes when we percolate up here, it may require us to, to re-examine a level that we, we've already looked at or internal nodes that we've already looked at. 
right? Because up here, this node was fine here. But now that we've percolated this 21 up, now all of a sudden, you know, we have to do a heapify operation here and swap the 11 and the 19. And when we do that, boom, we get this valid max heap here where all the parents are greater than um, the children. All right. So you do have to kind of, you know, there's no way you can just look at this, or at least for me, and just go, oh, yeah, I know which nodes need to be need to be percolated down. <laughs> right? You really have to draw this out. Uh, at least that's my opinion. Um, all right. So because we drew this out, let's see if we can answer these questions now. Uh, participation activity 7.4.5. Question one. Percolate down operation must be performed on which nodes? Well, as we saw here, for sure number 12 needed to be percolated. For sure number 11 needed to percolate. For sure 11 needed to percolate. Where is 21? Oh, well here we percolated 21 up, right? Here, we percolated 21 up. So I think that's why they say 12, 21, and 11. Um, and not only that, they are the only internal nodes. All right. What are the first two elements swapped? Well, again, in the sequence, um, looks like 12 and 15, right? Because this is the first internal node where it's not larger than its child and they need to be swapped. What are the last two elements swapped? Seems like that's this situation here where 19 is bigger than 11 on this internal node here, and it would be 11 and 19. And then it finally asks us, well, what is the final heapified array? Well, this is our final max heap tree. If we want to heapify it into an array, we go 21, 19, 15, 21, 19, 15. Okay, it could be these two. 13, 11, 12, 13, 11, 12, not 13, 12, 11. <laughs> right? But, see, and they're going to do something like this to you on the OA, where they're just going to swap the ordering of two of these in the array and say, is this a valid heap? <laughs> All right. Um, so be very, very careful when you're examining those array choices concerning a heap. All right, here is, so, you know, we saw graphically how this heap sort worked. Where was it? Here. All right, how we, we keep reheapifying, grabbing a big one, throwing it to the end, reheapify, grabbing a big one, throwing it to the end. This is what the algorithm looks like. And it's actually pretty gosh darn, um, call it neat, fine, whatever. Uh, simple. I mean, literally, what is this, five lines of code? And the, and the only thing we're doing is this first for loop is doing that heapify operation that we saw, where here, where, um, you know, here's, here's the original array, where was it, step one? Right, and then and then it shifts them around. That's the first loop, and then it takes the next biggest value, puts it to the end, and then it reheapifies. So this first loop here is heapifying to force whatever the biggest number is to the top, and then the second for loop here is swapping those two, uh, the biggest value with the guy on the end, and forcing it to heapify again. All right, so it's a couple of for loops, uh, and and obviously we need the percolate down code. Where the heck was the percolate down code? Seven point, I think it was last chapter. Seven point three showed us the percolate down code. So, um, I don't know. Pretty gosh darn neat. Um, this is able to sort and end log end time. They don't really state that, do they? Oh, here, uh, and in fact, yeah, it is. And log out. Does it use recursion? No. Merge sort uses recursion. And I think we're going to talk about merge sort later on. 
But heap stored is just calling percolate down, which is not itself, right? Recursion means that the function is calling itself a bunch of times until a base case. This is just calling max heap percolate a bunch of times in a in a for loop. So there is no recursion here. All right, enough about that. Um, we are out of time here. Um, I think the the challenge activity here is a good one. Uh, I would um, definitely use that for practice um, if you need to, you know, to prepare for the OA concerning heap sorts and and heapification. Let's call it. Um, I don't even know if that's a real word. But uh, all right. With that said, I am going to have to. Yeah, I was trying to get all the way through unit seven, but at least we made it halfway. Um, yeah, if you're if you're still here, please feel free to stick around to ask any further questions. Otherwise, if you're watching this at home, please, um, you know, feel free to leave me a comment, like the video, whatever. Email me. Uh, that's what keeps me going and helps make me make these videos better. Okay. So have a great rest of your day and uh, study hard. Thanks.